as you can see behind me, we've got quite a creative shape with some missing um, tiles in which we've inset some uh, items, allowing and showing, demonstrating that my tile is a very flexible, very creative tool, so you can pretty much do anything you want within the confines of the um, uh, the cube itself. So, just giving you a very brief background on why my tile really came to market, and what Christie noticed um, during its development phase was uh, the world is very much a 16 by 9 world, which is absolutely fine in most environments, but there are a number of applications, a number of environments, a number of architectural uh, environments where 16 by 9 really doesn't work, and you need something a little bit different, a little bit more creative, a little bit more functional. And so my Tiles was really seen as a way to fulfill that gap, to give the audience, to give our customers the chance to enhance and add value to their, their structures and their buildings rather than um, put digital display up for the sake of it. That in itself is often seen as a poor use of space, uh, which is something that obviously we wanted to try and move the market away from so that the market could add value, our farmers could add value to their customers, which for us um, you know, is obviously a key part of our marketing and, and uh, business development strategy. One of the things that we noted within the overall displays in the market at the time, and certainly still to this day, was uh, what we would expect as being fairly natural uh, occurrences within the display, such as colour um, accuracy or colour uniformity, was severely lacking. So when we brought the mic to market, we tried to find ways in which we could increase that uniformity, increase that colour calibration, and make sure that the colours that we delivered were what the end users expected, particularly if we were going into a market such as digital signage and retail where brand colours are extremely important to the development of their business. And the last thing that we wanted to obviously address was the fact that nobody I've ever come across in five years of, of selling my tiles ever asked for a bigger bezel. Okay, the smaller the bezel, the better. So one of the key components to this product was how to reduce the bezel to a level that was acceptable to, um, to the viewing audience and, and I'd like to think that we've achieved that. So some of the real key differentiators with Microtiles uh, micro and why they are uh, the different propositions to other solutions that you may see in the market. On the screen here, in roughly in the middle, you see roughly a, a design of Microtile. Um, now that is something that can be achieved using this product, very simply, very quickly, um, without too much uh, uh, fabrication involved. And the product itself has been designed to give you ultimate creativity and flexibility. You can, you can really start to challenge some of the, the concepts, some of the thinkings that are out in the market space about how a visual display technology should look, and therefore the more creative and impactful you make it, the greater chance of actually getting your message across. And we've got many examples of this um, in the real world. You know, in Madrid, for example, we've developed a wall that has microtiles set at very different uh, depths. And I was there the other day, and within that 10 minutes that I was standing there, six or seven people stopped and just took a picture because it's just not something they've seen before. And that's really the beauty of microtiles. It engages an audience that perhaps are bland, if you like, to, to thinking about digital displays because they see the same thing day in, day out, in every location. Very simple, very easy to use. Microtile itself allows a very quick configuration, and very quick dismantling of that um, particular array. So organisations are finding that they've got a unique proposition that they can take to market. They can put a display in an entrance lobby or in a reception room, and then if they need to go to a show or to an event, they can simply move the tiles that are already in their possession, move them to a location, rebuild them as a different shape, move them back again. So they're finding that they're able to use the same product time and time again in different environments. It's a very long lasting solution, and I'll explain why shortly, but in essence, this particular technology, you can run it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, up to about seven and a half years to half brightness. So it just goes on and on and on. It's designed for longevity and long lasting. So the market is littered with technology. Some of it is absolutely right in the applications that they use, some of it isn't. So historically you've got LED technology, it's a very bright technology, it's pixelated. And that's probably its biggest issue, particularly when using it internally. So if you're looking at an LED wall internally, realistically anything from 10 to 15 metres, you start to see those individual pixels, which isn't ideal. It's also very bright technology, and again internally that perhaps, depending on your environment, isn't ideal. And it can be cost prohibitive. The smaller the pixels, 
the greater the euros that you need to buy a square metre. On the opposite side of the table, you have projection. Christy loves a projector. Christy's been selling projectors since 1935 in some form or another, so projectors are very much our core business. But we also recognise that projection isn't right for every single application. We have lamp hours to take into account, we have dust to take into account, we have sight lines and viewing angles. So as great as projection is, and projection over the years has come on tremendously, it's still not right for every single application. And then in the centre you have LCD plasmas, a far more common technology. You know, we see it everywhere, you look around this hall and there's LCD plasmas everywhere. And they're ideal in some respects, they're very affordable, but they're not ideal in other respects. Colour matching for one, size of bezel depending on the brand that you buy. You know, so there's all these considerations to take into account. When Microtask came to market, as I mentioned earlier, one of its greatest um, uh, if you like, challenges for the engineers was to reduce the gap, reduce that bezel so that it's you know, as invisible as it can be whilst maintaining front accessibility. So typically on an old LCD, this one's a little bit more modern, there are a couple around here, where you will see the, pit, the, the bezel pitch to pitch of about 10 to 20 millimetres. The more um, modern ones, like this one, closer to about 6 millimetres. You then have the bezelless um, plasmas and, and LCDs, so just under that 6 millimetre mark. But with Microtile, you can go from 0.7 or 1.3 millimetres. Now the screen you see behind me today is a 1.3 millimetre screen, but there is another screen that we've just launched which reduces that gap by another half down to 0.7. So that gives you a virtually seamless display technology from obviously uh, uh, you know, in the distance. So that, that's a really big plus. So the tile itself is a fairly simplistic model, as I've already mentioned. There's, there's very few real component parts to it. Um, but what it is, it's a one-size-fits-all type of approach because behind each single mic tile, as you'll see when I open one shortly, is a very short very rear projection engine. So the size of the cube has been built specifically, obviously, one to match um, the, the, the components that we're using, but also to keep within a configuration that is familiar with us all. So each box is 408 by 306. It's effectively a 4 by 3 aspect ratio box which in the world of 16 by 9 may sound like an odd box to have, but I'll explain why shortly. By 260 deep, so it's not a particularly big box. They weigh about 9 kilos, they, they use about 70 watts per, um, per tile uh, typical brightness. So they're a very easy, very functional product to lift, move around, redesign, rebuild, recreate. Now, Part of the whole concept behind Microsoft was developing a strategy that gave you the ability to move away from 16 by 9 but that's not to say dismiss it completely, far from it. And we recognise that a lot of our clients would want 16 by 9 So actually what we've done is by building a 4 by 3 aspect ratio tile, that gets you to 16 by 9 a lot easier than had we built a 16 by 9 tile. So 12 tiles effectively at 4 by 3 gives you an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. So a lot of our deployments actually do follow and maintain that aspect, but what they've done is they've got very creative with the elements around it. Now the component parts of the mics are um, very high quality grade components, and so what we have here is a very short throw, specifically developed um, engine. On that engine it's illuminated by a series of LEDs. And it's those LEDs combined with that single chip DLP engine and the single chip itself that give us the ability to reach a colour gamut far higher than any other technology. Which is why when you look at some of these colours, the reds, the greens, the blues, they are much more realistic with what you would expect to see in the real world. So if you've got an item of clothing and you're a retailer and you know, you've got a great pair of jeans that, 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 that are red in colour, then you expect to see them on the screen much in the same way as you expect to see them in real life. And the components themselves are very easily replaceable. So the whole Microtile solution is front accessible. So that in itself means that once you deploy the screens, deploy the wall, you can pretty much leave them exactly where they are for their life cycle. Should you need to gain access to them, you pull the screen off, which I'll show you shortly, and that gives you access to the power supply, the fans, the light engines, the electronics. And those core component parts can be changed while the wall is still lit. So depending on your application, if the wall starts to fail, 
you can actually get to it whilst it's lit, work on it, five minutes later you replace the power supply, the wall's back up and running again. But the real clever feature of the product, as great as this is, and it's, you know, it looks fantastic, but the brains behind it is that little box there which in real life is black or grey, which is the ECU, the external control unit. This is the processor, this is the brains behind the whole system. And it's the processor that drives, delivers, maintains, and shows the whole uniformity of the microtile wall. So behind us here, we have a wall that's all daisy chained together. One tile links into the next, into the next, into the next, and so on. And then attached to that, we have the processor. In the real world, behind that, you would then have a media player running with some style software. But what you do is you build the first row, you build the second row, so on and so forth. You connect your ECU, you connect your media player, you turn them on. And what you will end up with is a wall that looks like that momentarily, so it will look catchy. Now that typically is what a wall has looked like in the past, and we've accepted it. Okay, it's just been one of those things, that's how they work, that's how they live. But what Microtile does is each and every one of these tiles will communicate with the processor. So this one sends a message to say, I have a neighbour above me, a neighbour to the left, and a neighbour to the right. This one here sends a message to say, I have somebody above to the right, but it doesn't send a message from the left, and neither do these here. So very quickly, the processor calculates, okay, you must be X number wide by X number high. But in return, what it also says is, okay, what can you each achieve on the LED? So this one might say, I can achieve 31, 32, 33 on the red, green, and blue. This one might say, I can achieve 60, 61, and 62. So the processor says, okay, you're the worst performer. We will set the wall at your level, and we will continue to pull the wall to ensure that all of the tiles remain uniform and consistent with their colour. So what you actually end up with is a wall that looks a little bit more consistent and true across its whole um, point to point definitions. So here are some Scala Christie joint um, uh, relationships with joint wounds. There's one missing off here which has recently happened, which I'm not going to have a problem with, which is PwC in London. But Scala themselves have used Mike Tiles at um, a number of their shows. He was also the um, media servers and the software running a deployment we did in uh, Moscow for a premiere of Tron. That was a rental. London Stock Exchange, which collectively is probably one of the, um, the biggest deployments that we have, with 508 tiles and nine uh, Scala players. And then across the bottom here, this one here in Corio, this is actually here in Holland, and was one of the very first deployments. So, you, you know, I mean, I could talk about each and every one of them, I'm not going to, but the, the, the core message here is that micro tiles and Scala work very, very well together, that they're a natural combination, they're a natural fit, and also the way that the organisations work and approach the market. Um, it's a very good fit as well, so we actually share a lot of our partners. So the last thing we need to talk about is the uh, interactivity kit. And the interactivity kit is right behind me here. And what you have is a series of infrared across the top and a series of LEDs across the sides and the bottom. And as you approach the wall, it's designed to take a, uh, a measurement of your shadow and a position of your shadow. But the kit itself is extremely simple to, to use and maintain. So, it's a USB touch device, so the USB plugs into what we call the master controller, into the back of a PC server, and away you go. It recognises it, plug and play. If you've got a Windows 7 or Windows 8 platform, that in itself is, uh, is touch enabled, so you can use that straight away. If you want specific content, then obviously you need to, uh, to go ahead and create that. That's well within the skill set of the people around the table. Um, but as a product, it's a true multi-touch system, so it doesn't just have to have one individual person playing at any one time. You can have a multi-touch uh, approach where if it's a museum, for example, and you've got three or four people lined up, then you can do that. The other thing is, is it's not specific to microtiles. Whilst it's designed to fit a microtile array, it's actually usable on virtually any other display. So the phrase now would like to just, so as you can see, when you simply touch the screen, in this particular instance, it's turned that particular um, box into a, a bigger screen and this one's running a little video so it gives you an idea of you know, effectively what can be achieved. And the only other thing really to do at this point is to, to remove one of these boxes. Right? Just take the plunger and that gives you access to the whole array. So the screen itself is a config, it's 
going to call it a consumable screen, but a component screen is what I meant. So in the event that somebody damages a screen, whether it be an engineer by dropping it, whether it be a customer by scratching it, you only need to replace that one component part. And that in itself is a huge cost saving on replacing the entire screen. But otherwise, the controls are the power supply, the electronics, all the fans, all the entire light engine. Very simple, remove it, replace it, put it back on, and you're up and running again. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it.